So thank you so much. So can I share my screen right now? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much. Uh, are you listening me? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. I would like to uh, express my hearty thanks to uh, the Department of Mass Communication, uh, University of Solapur, and particularly uh, the chairperson of the department, Professor Rabindra Chinkolar. Uh, and I would like to thanks once again uh, to all of you, those who organized this uh, multidisciplinary international conference at University of Solapur. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, uh, an issue that is uh, critical approaches to developing communication uh, from South Asian experience. Uh, let, let's start. So by saying critical, uh, by saying critical, what do we mean? Uh, to me, uh, questioning the theoretical and epistemological assumptions is very important. Uh, so, I mean, the theoretical and uh, epistemological assumptions means uh, who is forming this theory of uh, development uh, communication, the policy of development communication, discourses regarding development communication. And it also means the question in the production of knowledge, particularly in development communication area or discipline, and uh, what constitutes knowledge about problems and I mean the development problems, development issues, uh, I mean co community re regarding, <coughs> sorry, communities, uh, those who are involved or associated with the development project. And the third uh, point that is how the knowledge is produced and for whose benefit. So we need to see the production of knowledge and the target uh, people, I mean, the community and the, the issues, how they identify and whose benefit. Uh, in international development, uh, I mean, development uh, or global uh, development becomes a mechanism of control, as you know, where poor countries have little means of decline. Uh, and development apparatus functions to support the consolidation of Western power, uh, more particularly American hegemony. So we see that this development communication or international development or international communicator, it, it becomes a mechanism of control. And uh, as I said earlier, that poor countries have very little, uh, little thing to do here, and uh, it's make a binary like global south versus global north, uh, which is deeply rooted uh, with colonial discourse, and we can connect it with a uh, new colonial binary uh, like the binary advance uh, versus backward the binary civilized versus uncivilized, the binary progressive versus primitive. So this sort of binary we see in development discourse, uh, we need to unpack this and we need to unlearn this to make a uh, uh, sustainable development from a context of global south. So here is an example. Uh, so you, know, you are very much familiar with Transparency International. Transparency International is an international non-profitable organization based on Germany. It monitors global corruption. And each year, you know, Transparency International uh, uh, publishes um, this corruption perception index, and that ranks the, the countries of the globe in terms of corruption. Uh, and we see there is a clear binary between clean versus corrupt since its beginning, I mean, the establishment of this organization in 1993. So you see, uh, very clean countries are located, mostly located uh, in global north and very corrupt countries are mo mostly located in global south, particularly Africa and Asia. So here's the latest ranking of corruption perception index. That is the top 10 countries, like clean countries are located, uh, I said clean, just see, are located mostly in oest, like New Zealand, Denmark, Finland, Switzerland, Singapore, Sweden, Norway, Thailand, Luxembourg, Germany. So out of 10, just you see nine countries are located in West and these countries are categorized as 
clean country. And you see the corrupt countries are mostly located in Asia and Africa, Somalia, South Sudan, Syria, Yemen, Venezuela, Sudan, Ghana, Libya, North Korea, and Congo. So by saying this, what I want to say that in fact, in development discourse, when it comes to corruption, uh, corruption ranking or corruption perception index, they will see a very clear, uh, clear binary, good versus bad, uh, clean versus corrupt. Now, the power, power becomes very important. Uh, uh, in critical approaches, of, uh, approaches to development communication. And we see an uneven power relation between developed versus un, uh, uh, um, developed and underdeveloped nations or countries where developed are seen as superior and underdeveloped are seen as inferior. And most important thing is that we are desiring or aspiring to be like the developed countries. And uh, in, we are seeking their help and as if they'll, uh, they're playing the role of savior, they'll save us uh, and they, they will play a significant role to eradicate uh, under uh, and poverty under development in global south. So that is what I term like white man burden. See here, this is, this is very, uh, very renowned uh, write-up of Gayatri Spivak, an Indian philosopher theorist who is working at University of Columbia. Um, uh, so he, can the subaltern speak? And she says, uh, what is white man burden? Like white man saving brown women from brown men. This is a very famous quotation of God's spirit, which is very much, very much interlinked with the, uh, the, the discussion of development communication. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So we see uh, there is a methodological universalism. So they are providing knowledge uh, regarding development communication. Uh, OST is providing, uh, I mean, producing policies regarding development. Uh, OST, OST is prescribing, uh, prescribing regarding development discourses. So we see, we see it's, there is a methodological universalism. So what they are, uh, suggesting us, uh, they are considering that is universal, that is not a particular, that is universal knowledge. So we see a very clear, I mean, pro, pro Western understanding of development uh, and her theories and norms from dominant development donors and researchers, which are at odds with the distinct experience of the majority of world's population uh, who lives outside of the industrialized Northern and Western context. So I want to say here that uh, those who are making policy regarding development, uh, those who are prescribing uh, regarding development issues, uh, most of them don't have any practical experiences uh, about the people, those who live outside the industri uh, industrialized or Northern or Western context. Now, <coughs> that we see a representation. Now uh, we can say here that that is misrepresentation of global south. The development discourse inevitably contains a geopolitical imagination. So you can see a geopolitical imagination. What is first world and what is third world? And Harry Truman, right this moment, we can recall the name of US President Harry Truman uh, administration uh, who formed a clear binary between first world country and third world country after second world war. So it creates a geopolitical division between uh, global north and global south, between third world and first world. And it is implicit in their discourse that in expressions such as uh, global, global uh, north is, uh, big, I mean, is treated as center and global south is treated as periphery. And the frame, if you see the frame of third world development, I, I, I put here two examples, one from Egyptian context, like um, while they explain Egyptian development, so they are trying to say too many people on too little Arabian land. So overpopulation uh, becomes an issue uh, 
uh, that that they consider as a cons as one of the constraints in uh, de for development. And uh, rather than raising political questions regarding social and economic inequality. And second thing, like another example from uh, Africa, when they experience AIDS, they focus on, they focus on heterosexual practices. I mean, heterosexual practices instead, uh, they are trying, instead talking about uh, Africa's poverty impacted health infrastructure. And another thing, other aspect, I would like to draw your attention that is gendered nature of development discourse. Then when women comes in development issues, like women are highlighted in development projects designed to reduce fertility rates, contraception becomes reinforced as a female responsibility. And women are targeted in children's health interventions. Women's central role in infant care is emphasized. And this is very important that when they talk about women empowerment, when they talk about women emancipation, they're mostly, uh, they're very much guided by white feminism or Western feminism. Uh, so by critiquing white feminism, Western feminism, Chandra Mohanty, a famous name, who wrote an article in 1984 that is under Western eyes, feminist scholarship and colonial discourses. So Mohanty argues here that third world women are assumed to be a coherent group or category prior to their entry into the development process. All third world women have similar problems and needs, thus they must have similar interests and goals. Uh, and he also, uh, also argues that this is uh, European assumptions that demonstrates Western women as secular, liberated and having control over the over their own lives while the third world women are oppressed and suppressed. For them, I mean, for white feminists, third world women are oppressed and suppressed. On the contrary, first world women or Western women are secular, liberated, and they have control uh, on their own lives. This notion reinforces Western cultural imperialism, as Monty says. Now, uh, uh, private and public part partnership, PPP, becomes important in development discourse. PPP leads to the commercializations of, there are some features, I'm just uh, explaining those, like PPP leads to the commercialization of public programs, and certain issues are addressed while others issues are neglected, and particular frames of uh, communities and issues are highlighted while others are marginalized, and selected values such as Consumerism are advocated while others are ignored. Uncritically highlight the merits of free market economy. Uh, and this commercialization of development interventions has some features like uh, focuses on short term goals at the expense of long term interest. Uh, it treated uh, people as consumer instead of citizen, like individuals are valued in terms of their ability to consume rather than their human rights and social change is posited as an individual level and ne neglecting social and structural problems. So they are focusing on individual problem from individual level uh, instead of focusing on collective, collective uh, solutions or structural problem. And this, uh, this ideology or this, uh, this discourse reinforces new liberal principles and ideology sees human beings as market actors and promotes an ideology, uh, ideology that is uh, like greed is good. This is a comment of Stuart Hall, uh, who said 2018 that greed is good and the poor are blamed as acting irrationally and considering environmental issues from an economic framework. Now, uh, we have talked about uh, some limitations of uh, contemporary development discourses uh, and I consider that that is their development. Uh, but what is about our development? Uh, and I coined this term like their development, our development from Parthi Chatterjee, a renowned uh, professor, American, I mean, Indian born American professor who wrote a book that is their, their modernity and our modernity. 
So I coined the term and I, I, I rephrased that as their development and our development. So if you consider that the development discourses are produced, uh, circulated and distributed by OEST, or Western organization and institution, development institutions. So what should be our, uh, our way out and our development process? So here is a comment of Escobar, a renowned professor, US professor, who said that the process of unmaking development, however, is slow and painful. And there are, there are no easy solution and prescription. So we need to unlearn contemporary or current development discourses. And we need to unmake. Uh, so his book, I, I'll talk later about his book that is Encountering Development, uh, The Making and Unma Unmaking Third World. I'll talk about that later. So this is not a very easy way. This is a painful journey, a slow journey, and there is no easy solution here. Uh, so to create a decolonized development discourse, uh, this quotation uh, of Ashish Nandi is very relevant here. So OS, OS is now everywhere, within the OS and outside the OS. It in structures and in minds. So we need to understand that. So to create a decolonized development discourse, uh, we need to struggle, uh, we need to fight to uh, for create that. And here's the term that is post-development. This term has provided some uh, some scholars, critical scholars, like, as I mentioned, Escobar, uh, they argue that the models of development are often ethnocentric. In another word, I can say uh, Eurocentric, universalist, uh, and based on Western models of industrialization that are unsustainable in this world of limited resources and ineffective for the ignorance of local, cultural, and historical context of the people. Uh, this book, as I mentioned earlier, that the book of Escobar, Encounter and Development, uh, this book, uh, Escobar and others like Gustavo Esteva, they argue in post-development that uh, they emphasize on social movements as radical alternative to, do to dominant development structures and ideologies. Uh, so they emphasize on social movements and promote a more reflexive approach to social change so for getting new identities, new discourses, new nar narratives regarding development, we need to focus on social resistance and social uh, movements. And they argue that development is an development as ontologically cultural. So development ideas, development need, needs to focus on cultural context. So development should be culture, cent culture centered so we need to focus on that as because, you know, in different culture, uh, uh, meaning has changed in different in number of ways. So we need to focus on different cultural contexts to understand the appropriate meaning of a particular thing. Here is an example, like see, as I mentioned earlier that uh, Transparency International talks about, I mean, monitors uh, corruption, global corruption. So the public sector becomes the prime source of corruption for TI. But the division between public and private is not a, not a universal phenomenon. That is assumed from a European socio-cultural and historical tradition. For Akhil Gupta, uh, he said in 1995, the margin between state and non-state is blurred in Indian subcontinent uh, discussions about corruption. So, uh, I, I, so this is very important that uh, what a particular thing I mean in a big, in a culture, thing, I mean, meaning maybe change in different cultures. So development, I mean, policies and development discourses should focus on that. <coughs> I'm sorry. So for that reason, uh, we need to go out of development institutions like World Bank, like IMF, like ADB, like African Development Bank, like Transparency International and so on. So we need to go out of them and they're, they're providing prescription, they're providing uh, suggestions regarding development. And uh, that, is, uh, that is, I consider a top-down approach. So we need to uh, challenge that and we need to uh, come out from, uh, with our, from our own culture 
and that is what I identify as bottom-up approach. And uh, like I mentioned, development communication theory needs to expand its focus beyond the work of development institution. And these new discourses will come from social resistance. And resistance to development was one of the ways in which third world people attempt to construct new discourse and, and identities. For example, uh, I um, just I mentioned here uh, some uh, some movements in India like Nandigram movement in West Bengal, like Shingur movement in West Bengal. One is against uh, Tata group, and another one is against Salim group, Indonesian Salim group. And in Bangladesh, some movements like Fulbari movement against Asian Energy Corporation and Rampal movement. Uh, so that is what I said earlier, that is bottom-up approach you need to focus, not top-down. There is a poster, a recent movement uh, that took place in 2018 and also 2020 and 21st. Uh, that is uh, Safer Road Movement in Bangladesh, particularly in Dhaka. So this movement, uh, here is a poster, the school-going students uh, they they organized this movement and here is a, uh, a, a caption we do not need 4g mobile network we need justice just see how language changes here so 4g mobile network is an indicator of development but they don't they reject this concept this idea we don't need 4g mobile network rather we need justice so justice becomes very important. Justice is more important than 4G network. So I think uh, this sort of alternative thinking, this sort of alternative discourses, alternative narratives, alternative uh, rhetorics will come if you focus on uh, local context, if you focus, focus on movements and resistance. So in last slide, what I want to explain here that development approaches should be contextually sensitive to a particular time and space. Like uh, it needs to incorporate local culture and knowledge, first of all. And secondly, uh, uh, defense and promote of localized, pluralized grassroots movements. And third, like take inspiration, uh, development discourses, discourse should take inspiration from vernacular societies and need to emphasize on informal sector and frugal rather than naturalistic lifestyles. And it believes that the economy must be based around solidarity and reciprocity. And uh, policy, developed policy must focus on direct democracy. And last point that is knowledge systems should be traditional and at least a hybrid of modern and traditional knowledge. So there are some issues like uh, emphasize here, like local local culture knowledge, uh, grassroots movements, vernacular societies, uh, like informal sector, um, solidarity and reciprocity, direct democracy, uh, traditional knowledge, and so on. So we need to focus on these for getting new ideas, new narratives, new discourses uh, from global South background, from South Asian background. Uh, and, that's all about my my lecture uh thank you so very much for listening to me uh, i appreciate for inviting me for this lecture if you have any question we can talk about that later thank you so much uh, thank you sir uh dr kurshid alam sir said the critical approaches itself is a development communication being critical means how knowledge should produce to universe Sir talked about the uh, mechanism of control is the development. Sir also explains the clean versus corruption. Power is the center in critical approach. Development is concerned to whole universalism. Sir said third world development, that is the farming. For example, he told us uh, Egyptian development. Sir also says about gender nature, also the discourse of the development, importance of PPP, private public partnership. Sir also discussed the post-development, uh, encountering development, their development, our development, socio-cultural development, and also explains the out of the development. All the concepts are discussed with us. Many experiences from South Asia, uh, sir, shared. 
So I'll also talk about the changing the development language also. Uh, at the end, uh, sir uh, uh, said approaches of uh, development should be sensitive and in a particular time and place. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Now, I, I would like to request Mr. Sir, uh, Morissa, Marke, before sir. that, yes, Marke, yes, uh, we will Kocha, take a uh, question and answer session, yes. I would like to request all the participants, if you have any questions, queries or doubts, please ask. You can free to ask questions and anyone, please mute. Hello, sir, uh, I am asking a question. Hello. I'm listening. Uh, who's yeah. saying? Uh, I'm Dr. Ravindra. Ah, yeah. I'm Dr. Ravindra. My question is that uh, my question is regarding their development and our development. You have seen uh, developed countries and underdeveloped countries, developing countries. Uh, so, so my question is uh, uh, what is the appropriate theory uh, for the development of third world or developing countries? How it is possible? What, uh, what, what approach should be uh, uh, needed for third world countries? Uh, thank you so much, Professor uh, Ravindra. Uh, um, so I, I, I would appreciate your uh, question. Uh, it's very important. It's not, uh, I don't have any ready-made answer though, uh, but my experience is six years experience in the USA. Uh, if, I, if I connect that experiences uh, and uh, with my, uh, with the experience of South Asia. Uh, so what I think, in fact, we need to create a decolonized space. So I think uh, we need to come out the discourses, a colonial discourse and uh, new colonial discourses. Uh, so we need to create our own space. So we have our own way of development. So we need to emphasize on those. So I want to see this, uh, this discussion from a post-colonial theoretical perspective. So I think uh, I think we need to question. Uh, we, we, we should have a critical critical mind, and we need to question uh, the prescription that they are providing, uh, the suggestions that they are providing regarding development, the discourses that they are producing. Like as you said, that uh, uh, international uh, uh, NGOs, like uh, international non profit organization. Transparency International, when it said that, uh, so clean countries are located in global north and corrupt country, countries are located in global south. That means we are, we are belonging to corrupt countries. And we, so I think this sort of binary, we need to challenge that. So first of all, we need to question, we need to challenge their discourse. And secondly, we need to come up with our own ideas, own identities and own, own narratives. So I think uh, that is a big challenge and we, for creating a decolonized space. And I'm struggling to create that, that space here. Thank you, Professor Rabindra. Uh, sir, uh, which media is uh, uh, more powerful for uh, development according to you? Uh, I think, uh, thank you. I think digital, digital uh, communication, digital media, social media, these are very important as because mainstream media are very much, if, it, if I talk about multinational or transnational media, then those are very much uh, owned by West, particularly USA. Like 10 companies, 10 US company, media com companies, they, they own 60% uh, of global uh, or transnational media corporations, okay. So you will not get the per, get the perspective or aspect of global south or uh, marginalized people. Um, second thing, uh, if we talk about our local media or national media, and uh, those mainstream media are very much owned by uh, by corporate sector, very much owned by elite class. So elite, uh, I mean, ruling ideas are the ideas of ruling class. That is a very renowned comment of Karl Marx. And he talks about this in German ideology book. Uh, that's the ruling class ideas are not the ideas of mass people. So if we think that 
uh, we'll make our media and mass media for mass people. Uh, so we need to focus on uh, social media, digital media, or alternative media. I as because people have have some sort of access uh, to to uh, get in these medias to raise their voices. So I think digital digital media become very important and nowadays to raise the voices of have not people for subaltern people. Thank you. Sir, hello, this is just uh, me uh, from Solapur University. Sir, I would like to ask uh, your insights on political influence on development communication. Uh, thank you so much. In fact, uh, uh, nothing is apolitical. I think everything is political. So uh, when when you, when you say political as if when you say political as if that is the only thing that is uh, associated with politics, but everything is political. Uh, you know uh, when uh, as uh, I'm, I'm giving example from TI again, I mean Transparency International. Uh, so they are considering public sector or government sector uh, to investigate their corruption. They don't count for, uh, I mean corporate corruption. So that is, I think, political. Uh, that is a political issue. So uh, I think development discourses or development paradigms are very much connected with politics, global politics, very much connected with corporate politics, very much connected with, uh, I mean, a, a, a very much historical. Uh, and uh, so as because they're forming policies, they're providing prescription, they're saying that sustainable development, they're saying millennium development. So all these are things that are very much connected with their uh, long-term and short-term political purposes and political goals. So I don't connect, uh, I don't, don't disconnect this, I mean, politics from development or development from, from, from politics. So I see development from a historical, socio-cultural uh, and geographical context. And we need to grasp this idea from a, uh, from a multidisciplinary uh, approach as you are organizing this multidisciplinary international conference. So I think that is very much appropriate um, to talk about this topic. So yeah, uh, here's my answer. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, sir, uh, I can, I want to ask one question. Uh, you said Please. the, uh, development uh, language itself is changing. As a media teacher, uh, how we can uh, teach in the classroom, the development itself is a ch uh, changing, or we can uh, declare that uh, development itself is a political. And the next question is how we convince our students uh, this SDG is awareness. Uh, thank you so much. So, uh, in fact, I, I gave one example from Bangladesh context, Safer Root Movement, that students, school going students, they, I showed their poster and they say that we don't need 4G uh, mobile network. We, we, we want justice. So, I think uh, that is important. So, for that particular reason, we need to focus on newer movements. Uh, and um, our student at our classroom at University of Dhaka, uh, I conduct a course that is development communication course. And uh, for a student, I will need to uh, give them clear idea about sustainable development, about millennium development goals. So I think we need to tell them. So uh, here's the idea of sustainable development and you need to think it critically. So if you think critically by applying different critical tools, different critical troops, uh, the critical uh, theoretical notions. Uh, so then uh, our student will get ideas uh, about, they can clear their idea, they'll get better idea uh, about this sort of development concept. So I think uh, for students, we need to, first of all, we need to tell them about what it is as itself. And then we need to tell them, this is not something apolitical. That this is of course political. And we need to understand that from a political or uh, the political economy of sustainable development. So I think political economy of sustainable development is uh, very important that we need to teach our students. Thank you.